So hey guys, Magnus Robber here, bringing you another video. Today we are doing the part, I guess the third episode of TSTO Battle of the Best Events. So today we are going to be looking at the Stonecutters event versus Love Springfieldian style. So if anyone doesn't re uh, doesn't remember or didn't watch the first episode, which I encourage you to do first to watch the first episode, the rules of this are as followed. So. It's five rounds for each, um, you know, each versus. The first point is based on structure and theme. The second point is going to be based on characters slash costumes. The third point is going to be based off uh, buildings, and that includes building skins. Also, the characters slash costumes includes NPCs. Um, the deco and then the fourth point is decorations, and then the fifth point is just my general kind of. It's more more of a bonus point. It's just my general reflection on the uh, update and how I kind of see it un without looking at the specifics how I kind of feel about it um, so yeah let's do these two updates two very good updates I want to say uh, neither of these updates I don't particularly dislike but first let's talk about the theme so with the stonecutters uh, theme and structure what is the stonecutters theme and structure well uh, it's pretty self-explanatory it's based entirely on the Stonecutters episode. So, of course, it's based around that one episode and you get things from that episode. There are a few things, I think, uh, a few decorations that where I'm like, did that really come from the episode? But most of the things do come from the episode and you get uh, in here. So, yeah, I think um, very solid uh, theme, definitely. Very enjoyable. I, I really love the Stonecutters episode. I think the, the way that they plastered everything, obviously this is a um, older event, so it's got the kind of uh, free act structure somewhat. But what it also had is it has these puzzles, which I thought were very cool. So you have to do certain uh, tasks, certain puzzles to um, unlock certain things, and uh, basically you eventually unlock uh, all the stone cuts costumes, and that's how you unlock a lot of them. Now there were a few that were obviously added as donuts, but I just think that whole puzzle thing is so so awesome. Um, so yeah, that is the stone cutters event uh, as it as it stands. So let's move on to the love Springfieldian style. So love Springfieldian style is of course a multi event. It's the second multi event I think we got. Uh, of course, this came out in January twenty nineteen. Uh, yeah, so it's a multi-event. It's nothing too uh, different to what normal multi-events are. It's very simple in that regard. And obviously the theme is, of course, Valentine's Day. Now, this is the first uh, major, uh, first and only major Valentine's Day update. Now, I know in the past I've talked about 20, 2013's Valentine's Day and I've classed it as a major one. I, for the purpose of this Battle of the Best Events, I haven't classed it as a major one. I'm actually classing it as a mini, a mini event. But yeah, um, if this is the the only Valentine's Day update that is really a major event in my opinion, so it's very cool that they uh, did this. It's loosely based around the episode uh, Love Springfield and Star from season nineteen. Or however, I will argue it's not really. It's mainly just a bunch of you know things that they that fitted the theme. I will say that at times it's a little loose. Like for example. Principal Dolalinger, and this kind of comes down to the characters, I guess, but somewhat, it's somewhat about the theme as well. Like Principal Dolalinger, uh, I don't really understand how he really fits into it. It was just kind of thrown in there. There's a few characters like that, but yeah, overall, I think that this event, and even actually Mr. Bergstrom as well, to some extent. But overall, the theme is pretty solid for this event. Obviously, it's a very, it's the only Valentine's Day update we really have. However, who do I say is the winner? Well. Purely for the puzzles, I have to give it to Stonecutters. So that is the point for Stonecutters. Moving on, we have characters slash costumes. So, what did the Stonecutters give us? Well, the Stonecutters gave us number one and number 51. Obviously, number one being the leader and number 51 being that little alien. However, it gave us no other, uh, no other characters. The rest were skins. So we got a Stonecutter skin for Homer, Skinner... Um, Professor Frank, Grandpa, Willie, uh, Disco Stew, Arnie Pie, Ken Brockman, Waylon Smithers, Clancy Wiggum, Krusty, Montgomery Burns, uh, Mayor Quimby, Moe, Carl, Lenny, Jasper, and Dr. Haber. I know I've gone up the list, not down. But yeah, we got we got one from for pretty much 
all the major male characters in the um, in the game at that point anyway. All the yeah, obviously it's a male, it's a it's a league of males, so on, <laughs> there's no fe uh, costumes for any of the females. But regardless, I think uh, having all these costumes is, is pretty cool, and it's cool to try and collect all of them. I will say though, the one issue I have with these costumes, apart from maybe like a few of them, like Homer's and a few others. Uh, these costumes are largely useless in the in the sense that they don't really have animations. Now it's just a cool thing that if you want to put all the stone cutters in their stone cutting costumes, then you can do so. Um, and I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I think um, you know a lot of them were kind of free. I just think if you compare it to other costumes, they don't come out as well. So when I've been doing my costumes ranked videos, for example, a lot of these costumes don't feel that great when you compare them to other really great costumes. Uh, but the Stone Cold's costumes, regardless, I think are good. Uh, obviously, you unlocked a lot of them through the puzzles and or all the prize track thing. So honestly, uh, for the most part, I'm fine with them. Only two of them were actually premium. The number uh, the one for Frank, which was 12, and the one for 12 Donuts, and the one for Doctor Hibbert, which was 60. The rest were free. All of the costumes. Uh, as long as you unlock them. And then we come on to Love Springfieldian style. So we didn't actually get any costumes in this update, unfortunately. However, we did get a, quite a few characters. So we got uh, Mr. Bergstrom, who is definitely a really, really cool character. However, I will argue he was a little loose fitting. Groundskeeper Wilma, uh, you know, kind of a blink and you miss it, but almost like one of these Groundskeeper Willy uh, doppelgangers. We got Gender, of course, from the future episodes. Gloria, which is Snake's uh, like ex-wife slash girlfriend slash I'm not even sure. <laughs> uh, we've got Samantha Stanky, who of course is the girl that Millhouse kind of has a crush on. I think it was Millhouse. Um, Principal Dolinger, who obviously I've talked about, the uh, principal for the high school. Nikki McKenna, again one of the kind of bar, uh, another kind of Bart girl, Bart uh, relationship thing. Chaz Busby, of course he's the um, the dance dancing dude. He's a recurring character in some of the, in the later seasons. Nedward Flanders Sr., of course Ned's dad, Capri Flanders, Ned's mother, and Vicky Valentine. Again, she's quite similar to Chaz Busby, one of these kind of dance people, performing artists, teaching people. <laughs> so, um, this is really difficult, I want to say, because although I'm very tempted to be like, well, we've got all these cool stone cuts costumes, um, and, you know, we got number one, and we got... Uh, number 51 and and yeah like there's loads of cool there's loads of cool costumes there loads of there are two cool characters and loads of cool costumes but if we look at Lord Springfieldian style we've of course got like Mr. Bergstrom that's one great character we've got um, Nedward Flanders Senior and Capri Flanders really really cool and I think this is and Chaz Busby as well I think this is very 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 difficult and I feel like on a different day my opinion might be different <laughs> if I was to record this tomorrow for example and I didn't record this part maybe my opinion would be different but I find this point incredibly difficult however purely for the fact that most of them are uh, free I'm gonna have to give this point to the stone cutters so that is two points for the stone cutters in terms of characters and costumes. Uh, I do want to say though, Love Springfieldian style is very, very close. I think if they added one more kind of bigger character, for example, I don't know, maybe if they added, um, you know, if Mary Spockler was never added before this update and they were to add Mary Spockler, then this this probably would have gone to them. But it's it was very it's very difficult. But purely based on price, I'm going with the stone colours. Anyway, moving on, we've got buildings. So what did the stone colours give us in buildings? Well, it didn't give us very much. Here are the buildings. We got the Stonecutter Lodge, the Stonecutter Daycare Center, and the Abandoned Store. The Abandoned Store was at 30 donuts. So only two buildings for free and one building was premium. Not particularly very good. However, I will say all three buildings are very cool looking and they, they are very awesome. So um, yeah, I think pretty good, right? Well, let's move on to Love Springfieldian style. Well, Love Springfieldian style gave us a lot more buildings than free. We had the uh, Childarium, uh, we have the Miss Tillington's School, the Springfield Planetarium, the Springfield Union Station, Speedy Mart, Joe's Tavern, Sher Shelbyville Elementary, the Future Plastic Surgery Center, Oldie Springfield Townie, 
uh, Shady and the Vamp, the Springfield Dog Pound, St. Sebastian School for Wicked Girls, Golf and Die Retirement Village, Chaz Busby's Ballet Academy, the CBGB, and Little Vicky's School of Dance. I do want to say the only building that I slightly dislike is the uh, St. Sebastian School for Wicked Girls and somewhat the Dog Pound. All the rest of these buildings I actually really love. Um, I will actually say the Union Station is a little bigger. Or, I don't know. The Union Station is big, but at the same time it doesn't... I want it to be big, so I'm, I'm just going to leave that one. <laughs> the only two buildings I dislike are the Dog Pound and the St. Sebastian School for Wicked Girls, I would say. Well, I don't even dislike them. I just find them a little bit annoying to decorate. But yeah, some really, really solid buildings. So I don't think there's any... There's any, there's not really much argument. Um, just by sheer quantity, Love Springfieldian style takes the point for buildings. Anyway, so we have to move on to decorations. So with Love Springfield, uh, sorry, with the Stonecutters event, we of course got the hylographic wall, the tube slide, the all-seeing eye, which does actually earn currency. Um, so although it's not technically a building, it does earn currency. We got the sacred par uh, parchment, the chest of sacred artifacts, the money pool, the stone of triumph, the stonecutter table, Satan's anvil, and we got Ark of the Stone Covenant. Uh, so very, very, very cool buildings here. Loads of cool buildings. Um, sorry, buildings, decorations, I should say. I do think the all-seeing eye is definitely a plus. I probably could have counted that as a building, but even if I did count that as a building, it wouldn't have made much difference. I still would have given it to Love Springfield in style. But yeah, um, some very, very cool uh, stonecutter-related items here, for sure. Lots of cool stuff. So let's look at the uh, Love Springfieldian style. So in Love Springfieldian style, in terms of decorations, we of course got the Welcome to Springfield Arch, the Shelbyville Bluffs, uh, Contraception Overlook, the Quantum Tunnel, Future Limo, the Dining Animals, the Bar Dogs, and the Springfield Skate Park. And I want to say I hate, I hate the Dining Animals and the Bar Dogs. They, those ones were really annoying. However, I think there are some very cool decorations here. I think Quantum Tunnel is awesome. Uh, the Springfield Skate Park, Park I really like as well. Shelbyville Buffs, although it's kind of like a rock, it fits in very nicely and it makes decorating very easy. Um, Contraception Overlook, I'm a little sick of these kind of hills, but I get I get them. Um, I get that they have appeared quite a few times in the show and stuff, but I would say that's kind of meh, in my opinion. Um, and the rest are kind of eh. Like, the Welcome to Springfield Arch is very cool to get, of course. But with Stonecutters, I don't know, there's just... The Satan's Anvil, for example, that's very cool. All seen eyes, very cool. The tube slides, very cool. Like, I think <sighs> I hate to do it, but just purely based on practicality decorations, and I, uh, I just really love the stone cutters decorations. So it's going to the stone cutters. So of course that means that the stone cutters has won this particular battle. Love Springfieldian style. I want to say, although it only got one point. It was very close, but of course the bonus point I would have also given to Stonecutters, uh, purely just based on time scale. I feel like that 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 point might often uh, favour older events, unfortunately, but it's more just kind of nostalgia, and, and I kind of wanted it as a bonus point to break things off. But yeah, Stonecutters would have taken the victory anyway, so it's not m much of a big deal, so I'll submit the scores, and Stonecutters goes on to the uh, round two, where I will be versing the Terwilliger update. So... Of course, next episode is going to be sci-fi versus superheroes too, so stay tuned for that. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the Battle of the Best Events. I'm very much enjoying doing it, um, so tell me your thoughts on it. And uh, yeah, I shall see you in the next video. Thanks for watching as always. Goodbye.